Hello, hello, friend. Thank you so much for tuning in here at Free Life Chapel, where we help you discover and live the free life in Christ. My name is Kadi, and I'm so glad that you're tuning in with us. If you ever find yourself in the Central Florida area, come visit us. We want to connect with you face to face. But until then, visit our website, freelifechapel.org, to find out more about what's happening at your church. There's a phenomenal message in store just for you. I hope you're encouraged. There was a man who had two sons. One, one son was a, was a studier. He liked to stay around the house, and he just dove into the books, and he studied and studied and studied. And in fact, according to what we understand, he was a, he was a, a, a studier of God's Word. He studied God. He, he prayed. He, 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 that was his passion. That was his heart. The man's other son, the elder son, was a man that really wasn't so into a relationship with God, but really enjoyed, like, out running the fields. He was, he was a hunter, actually. Uh, and, and, and we find that he hunted with a bow, and, and he, he killed animals. In fact, he actually fed his family with much of the produce that he would bring home on a regular basis. And, and these were the two sons. And, and the, the father's name, you, you, might, you might, I don't know, you might recognize his name as Isaac. Isaac had these two sons. The sons were Esau, the guy who was the hunter. He was the oldest son, and Jacob. Jacob was the younger son, the one who was home a lot. And it, it came down, the story tells us in the Bible, towards the end of Isaac's life. He's about to die. He's, he's blind. He can't see. And he's calling for the family because he's about to transfer the blessing of the family to the eldest son. And the family was just so dysfunctional that Jacob's mom, she worked with him. The, the Bible says that Esau was a very hairy guy. He needed to get waxed really bad, but he, 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 was, he, was, he, was, he was like real hairy all over. And, and the Bible says that she literally helped Jacob put some skins on his arms so that when dad reached out to feel and identify his son, he would feel that hairy skin and be tricked into thinking that it was Esau when really it was just Jacob. Why would they do that? Because Jacob wanted the blessing of the birthright. He wanted the father. In fact, Jacob went and he was talking to Esau. Esau, again, cared less about what happened at home. He was in the fields. He was just running. He, he, was, he, was, like he would hit Ebor on the weekends a lot. You know, he, he was kind of doing his own thing. And, and, and the Bible says he began to marry a bunch of different women outside of their family and really caused a lot of problems for the family. But one day he came home really hungry, really tired because he didn't kill anything in the fields. And when he got home, his younger brother, Jacob, he looks at him and goes, Esau, I'll tell you what, I made some soup. If you will give me your birthright, I'll give you all the soup you want. I know you're hungry. And Esau's like, yeah, you can have the birthright. Give me that. You got any writs? And all of a sudden, now he's, he's eating the soup. He sold off. He, could, he just he flippantly handled. He didn't care. And when the day came that the blessing was going to be transferred, Jacob goes in. He's got the skins on. And his father, Isaac, who was blind, feels to identify him. And when he does... He then puts his hand on his head, and he gives him the blessing of the firstborn. He speaks the blessing of the family over his life. As soon as he did that, Esau comes running in. Wait! That's my blessing! That's mine! And Isaac, the father, realizing that he had already spoken it, was unable to take it back because what has been spoken is established. It was done. Someone shout, say that. Isaac spoke it, and because he spoke it, it could not be regathered. The blessing. What was it that made Jacob so in tune with the blessing? That he said, whatever I have to do to get my hands on it, I've got to have the blessing. I must have those words spoken over my life. I want that operating in me. 
That's what I want to talk to you about today. What is the blessing? I've got good news today. Your God is a blesser. Anybody glad about that? Listen, don't take that for granted. Because other gods in the world are angry gods. They are served in order to appease their anger so that they don't punish those who they are serving. People are in fear of and they have no promise from their God that even if they do it right, it will work for them. Other gods around the world, I could start naming them. They all operate in fear with no promise. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that we serve is the only God who is here out of love for you and for me. And he came after us before we ever reached back to him. Our God is a blesser. Our God is a giver. In other words, he's not angry. He's not mean. He's not out to get you. If he wanted to get you, he'd have got you. He's not out to get you that way. God is a blesser. In fact, let me take you and show you, give you a little history of the blessing. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. We're talking like we are at the beginning of the book, y'all. We just got done making animals, the trees, the fish in the sea, and now here's Adam and Eve, right? And now God is speaking. God, God is speaking in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Read the first few words with me. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Here's what God, God said, I want you to be fruitful. I want your life to increase. I want you to multiply. I want you to dominate in life. But before he did that, he blessed them. Now, this is, this is different. God blessed Adam and Eve. Then he released them to increase, multiply, rule, and dominate. You see, that sounds out of order to you and I. Because you and I think that we should dominate, rule, and increase, and then we deserve the blessing. But God, that's not how God does things. You and I don't understand the blessing. You and I don't understand the power and the impact of God's plan, his ways, his will, his word for our life. No, God doesn't start with you do, then I will. God's word starts with I will bless you and because I have blessed you, now you will multiply, now you will increase, now you will dominate in life. Genesis 1.28 shows us God's unexpected order. In fact, let me put it this way. Blessing is not God's reward for a successful life. It's the power to experience a successful life. Without God's blessing on your life, you would not be sucking air right now. Without God's blessing on your life, you wouldn't be sitting beside the person you're sitting beside right now. Just look at the tell you are tell them you're so blessed to be sitting beside me. You are so blessed. Look how you must be God's favorite. Somebody shout, I'm already blessed. I'm already blessed. I need you to believe that. I, I, I need you to hear what I'm talking about today. In Numbers chapter 6, we just sang this a few minutes ago. The ironic blessing, God spoke to Aaron, the high priest. He said, I want you to speak this over my people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. He says, I want you to speak that. Watch, watch, watch. Do not pray it. Speak it. I want you to declare, I want them looking. Don't tell me those are my words. I know what I said. Tell them. This is why when we spoke over our students, I didn't pray over them first. I spoke over them today. I declared, watch this, into their spirit. God's word, he was telling, he, 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 told, he told Aaron, I want you to speak to them. The Lord bless you. God is going to keep you. 
God's face is going to shine on your life. He's going to be gracious to you this year. His peace is going to invade your home, your mind, your relationships, your your business. He's going to infiltrate. He's going to dominate in your life. He's with you. Psalm chapter 20. King David speaks blessings into and over Israel. Not praying, speaking blessings into the people. Mark chapter 10, verse 13, Jesus spoke blessings over the children when he pulled them close. He spoke to them. Luke chapter 10, the Bible says that 72 people were sent out to go spread the good news of Jesus. But when they went, here's what they were to do. When you go out, bless them before you witness to them. Look them in the face and say, I want God's best for your life this year. I want your home blessed I want joy over, I want it just bubbling. I want everyone in the neighborhood running to your house because it's the place of laughter and peace and there's something blessed about being in your house. He, they, they spoke blessings to the people. Luke chapter 24, Jesus is ascending, the ascension of Christ. And as he's ascending, what does the Bible say he does? He blesses the people, as the disciples. As he's leaving, the last thing he does is not pray for them, but spoke over them into their spirit and blessed them. The blessing is all through the word. And you and I today have this same blessing on our life. But if we don't understand it, we miss it. It goes right past us because what you don't know is what hurts your life. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, this, uh, uh, verse 3, this is a great verse for you to know to get in your spirit. Here's what it says. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. You're already blessed. He has done it. It's, an, it's done. It's over. The blessing has been on your life. Heaven has been leveraged on your life since the day you came out kicking and screaming, got smacked by the doctor. You have been blessed from that day forward. you got to know this. But what you and I don't set our minds and our understanding and our focus to, it goes past us in our life because what you don't recognize, you miss. It's the law of recognition. You can have the greatest opportunities around you, but if you don't see it, you can't take advantage of it. You need to know that you're blessed. What what does this word blessed mean? Well, it's interesting. It means to speak well of spiritually. And it means to invoke a benediction and prosperity over your life. God's word over your life is I'm proud of you. Not that I'm mad at you. I'm not disappointed in you. Stop it. I love you. I've never bailed on you. If you're not careful, you'll put the reputation of people on me. I'm better than people. I love you greater than anybody else in your life has ever loved you. I love you different. I know you more and better than anybody else. And I love you more and better than anybody. I know your secrets. I know stuff that you erased off the history of your computer. I know that stuff too. I know the conversation you shouldn't have had. I know all of it and I'm crazy about you. I've never backed up on you one day in your life. I've continued to keep my blessing leveraged towards you. I just need you to understand it, to buy in and stop pushing back. Stop stiff arming the blessing that I have coming your way. I need you to receive it. What does the blessing mean? It means this, that God speaks well of you. I'm not mad at you. That that his authority is initiating action in your life. Do you think you got where you are by yourself? Some of y'all, so I'm coming. Some of y'all should have. I, I have missed that voice for three weeks. I, I, some of y'all should have been checked out a long time ago. But God has been good to you. 
Oh, don't tell, tell somebody, look, 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 somebody beside you. Tell them, God has been so good to me. God, God has been so good to us. Husbands and wives, look at each other. If it hadn't been for the Lord, we'd have checked out a long time ago. Come on, somebody. He's been good to us. He speaks well of you, number one. His authority is initiating action in your life. He is the source of your future. He is the one who's working right now in Monday, preparing Monday for you. That's the blessing that's on your life. He's gone ahead of you. This is the promise. And watch this. The third thing is he's placed his name on your life. Lord, bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you, give you peace. He put his name on your life. You need to understand the significance of that. Because just when you think that you are not worth fighting for, not worth loving, not worth him taking another breath or a glance towards you, you need to understand because his name is on your life, all through my Bible, he tells me this, he does things for his name's sake. So wherever Scott is, he sees his name in operation. And he says, Scott is on my nerves, but because of my name is on his life, for my name's sake, I've got to do something to help. Because he's a carrier of my name. He's bearing my name. My last name is on his life. And so wherever he goes, I promise you this, I promise you this. When my son, when Caleb was going through elementary school, through junior high, through high school, right up into college, because he had my last name on his life, I, it wasn't every other kid, but because he was carrying my name, whatever that little runt needed right there, he had it coming to him. I would break the bank. I would borrow it. I would sacrifice. I'd get another job. What do I need to do to take care of my last name that's resting on his life? If I would do that for my natural son, how much more will your heavenly father bankrupt heaven and rush to your side for his name's sake? You are covered is what I'm trying to tell you. You're already blessed. You're carrying the king's name on your life. You need to understand what that means. You see, the full flow, releasing the full flow, like, well, why, why am I not expecting? The, the full flow of God's blessing rests on us when our lives are then aligned with his will. The blessing has already been initiated. It's been released. But if you're not experiencing the fullness of what that blessing is, then it may be that you and I are out of step and outside of the flow because we have to work with God, in tandem with God. And when I stop stiff-arming God, when I stop lynching God, and I start moving towards God, it all changes. Now I begin to walk and flow with him, and life picks up momentum. Psalm 128, here's what the chapter says. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord and walks in his ways. I'm blessed. Not fear like, oh, he's going to strike me with a lightning bolt. That's not the right fear. Fear means a respect, an honor, a love. Blessed is everyone who respects and honors and loves God and walks in his ways. That's when the full promise that's already been released over your life can flow but then God does something crazy he shifts gears after this and he puts another principle in motion not only are we the receivers of the blessing now we are the givers of the blessing it's not a me 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 society do you understand I know we like our social media, but it ain't all about you. No, it is not. No, in fact, let me give you the biblical theology of blessing. If I can just break this thing down for you. Here, here, here's what you need to know. God doesn't bless a person for that person's sake alone, but in order to pour his blessings out through that person into the lives of others. You're blessed to be a blessing. Stop seeing it as what all I can get and then hoard it up. No, whatever comes into my life, I'm here to pour it right back out into others. If grace has been shown to me, then my words of grace are going to impact somebody else's life. If words of love and affirmation have been spoken over me, I'm going to turn right back around and give it to somebody else. Yes, I am. I'm going to speak hope and strength and courage. I'm going to lift people. They're not going to do life alone. I'm going to be a blesser. I'm going to transmit the blessing of heaven through 
through me to them. And as long as I remain a conduit of heaven, there'll always be a flow coming into my life that I can give to somebody else. You see, in the kingdom of God, it's not all about us. It's not a me, it's a we. In other words, if we're doing it biblically, if you're not good, I'm not good. I need to make sure your kids are good. What's hurting you hurts me. We rush together. You see, in God's economy, God has a kingdom, not a republic, not a democracy, not socialism, not communism. He has a kingdom. And in the kingdom, the way that the kingdom is set up is it's a common wealth. That means as long as we are all doing good together, it's not about any rising above and persecuting or coming down on others. It's we do this side by side. We bear each other's burdens. We care for one another and we lift. And we, there should be no poverty in this world today. There should be no one going hungry in this world today. Why is there? Because we left God as king in his kingship and we begin to do man's form of government all all around the world and it has broken our systems and hurt and, and, and damaged people in the process if we can turn our hearts and minds back to the king and his kingdom and his principles and his way of doing things the whole world is lifted together this is the plan you're made to be a blessing so I need you to help me with something do not get constipated with God's blessings I need you to share the blessings of God Turn to someone and tell them, say that, say that, say that. You're blessed to bless. You are, watch this, watch this. You are somebody else's courage. You are somebody else's joy. You are their breakthrough. You are their word of hope. Somebody at work is going through hell and they need you to look them in the face and say, whatever you're going through, I got you, boo. Let's do this thing. You and me, we're going to walk it out. God is on your side and I'm with you too. We're going to do this. Are you kidding me? The hope, the life, the strength that will hit your life and hit theirs? Ladies and gentlemen, you change lives by blessing people. Not by getting in their face and telling them where they're out of order. We all know where we're wrong. We all know. You can tell me what's wrong with my life. I say, is that all you got? I can add a whole lot more to that. You kidding me? You stopped way short. But we need to remind people that the blessing has already been released. That God is for you, not against you. We, we, we got to remind people, and we need to be reminded ourselves. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. Listen what, listen what the word says here. God told this to Abraham. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. God gave Abraham the power to bless others. That same blessing rests on you and I, the blessing of Abraham. That's on our lives as well. You own the ability and responsibility to bless others. You want to have a fun day? Go to Walmart and bless a stranger. Just compliment them. Cindy is notorious for seeing a beautiful lady walk by. and She goes, excuse me, excuse me. I just want you to know all that is working today. You just need to know that that is working for you today. She said, I think it, but if I don't say it, you won't be blessed by it. And you just got to know, girl, you are working that right there. She, she will call them out. I love that about my wife. She, she, she doesn't hold that back. Do you know how many people walk around? We, we get it all glammed up and we walk out and we're so insecure. We're going, oh God, I hope everyone likes it. I hope I'm okay. And then when somebody speaks and says, I love your outfit, girl, your hair is going on nice. Makeup just hit right. Ooh, them shoes. When, she, when they're hearing that stuff, they walk a little bit different. Now they just high stepping that thing. It changes stuff. You'd be surprised how little it takes to touch somebody's life but we're walking around closed up when we're supposed to be the people speaking the promises and the blessing and the hope and the love of Jesus. Remember, it's the kindness of God that draws people to repentance. It's not the condemnation. It's his kindness. Hebrews chapter 11. 
verse 20, speaking all the way back about Genesis. Listen to what the word says. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessing. Wait, 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 wait. Read those three words again. Invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. When Isaac blessed Jacob, he rewrote his future. They weren't empty words. It wasn't, oh, that was so nice, Dad. Thank you. That was, oh, my God, you just made me wealthy. Oh, my God, you just released the right relationships. Oh, my God, you just broke that addiction off of my life. When you said that, you rewrote, you scripted, you, you invoked future blessings. Watch this. That can't be reversed. You can't take it back. Once it is spoken, it's done. Genesis 49, verse 1, after Jacob had received the blessing, and oh, did he receive the blessing. Holy, th th his life he was wealthy. He, would ju he, he just amassed. It, 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 it's amazing what happens in this story. But listen, Genesis 49, 1 says this. Jacob called for his sons. Jacob is about to die. And said, gather around, read it, so I can tell you what will happen to you in the days to come. And he lays his hands on and speaks over all 12 of his sons and tells them what their future will be because he's releasing the blessing. Read it for yourself. It's in Genesis. I'm not making this up. Why have we not seen this? Why have we not embraced this to understand that, yes, our prayer life matters, but there is nothing like looking somebody in the eye and saying, let me tell you what I see in you and what God is going to do with your life. Mom and dad, with your children. When you look those kids in the face at four and five years old and they're picking their nose and their zipper is down at the same time <laughs> while you're speaking life into them, you'll never know how you're scripting how they think, what they're expecting, what they begin to look for, how, what they're, how, how they begin to look at other people, the confidence that's building on the inside, the strength, their ability to handle conflict because they know they're loved, they know they're accepted, they know they are adored, they know there's a plan for their life. Somebody's already talking about their future. You gave them vision for their future. You set expectations. You engaged it. Now they're looking for that thing you talked about. And as you keep speaking that over their life, over their life, over there. My son got tired growing up. Every time we would drop him off for school. Come here, son. Come here, son. Come here, son. Every time we'd drop him off for school, here's what we would pray over him. The mind of Christ and the wisdom of Solomon. Thank you. <laughs> Almost 30. He can't get it out of his head. And I guarantee you this. When I was speaking it into my son, guess what's about to happen? Malachi, my grandson, is going to be hearing that when he's getting older. Talia, my granddaughter, because it's in my son, the mind of Christ, the wisdom of Solomon. I will tell you this because I'm a proud daddy. Outside of pastorship in this church, my son, he is wise beyond his years. You know why? You know why? You know why? There's not something special. His father spoke into his future, and I declared over him what's about to happen. I didn't pray it. I spoke it into his spirit, and all of a sudden, something ignited. Something clicked. Something took on. I don't know if it was when it was the fourth grade, if it waited till the sixth grade, if it was the eighth grade, if it was the twelfth grade till he believed it, but somewhere along the line, it resonated on the inside. He engaged, and the wisdom and the favor of God has been on his life. Mom and dad, here's what I'm telling you. Open your mouth and say that. I need you to speak over your kids and speak over your grandkids. I need you to speak over each other. Men, look at your wives in the face and tell them, you're the fav you got the favor of God in your life. I'm for you. You're not doing this alone. God's blessing is on your life. I see his talents and his abilities wide open and available for you. I've got your back. I'm in your corner. Let's get life together. Speak life. Ladies, turn around and look at that guy with deltoids and biceps where he walks with his arms out here like that and speak into him and he'll melt like a little boy 
boy because men are not used to having somebody speak into their spirit but if you'll speak life into him talk to the king not the fool and all of a sudden the king will rise up inside of him I know we failed sometimes but God's plans in you are greater than where you are right now my brothers at Polk CI you're better than where you're sitting right now the hand of God is on your life you're not what the court system says you are you are who God says you are you're blessed you're talented and God's plan is not finished with your life we've got to speak the blessing declare the blessing Jacob believed the blessing he believed that it would transmit strength and leadership and confidence and favor and hope a preferred future I'm 56 years old and to this day when I hear from my mom and dad and mom says son I'm so proud of you I become like that 10 year old little boy say it again before I leave visiting my mom and dad we gather in the living room before we leave for the airport and we'll tell them pray over us lay your hands on us and pray over us speak over our lives to have the hand of my dad on my shoulder and him look me in the face and say son you're doing amazing your family is blessed your best days are still coming I'm so proud of what's happening through you and how God's using your life in ministry to hear that from my dad ladies and gentlemen I can't tell you the life and the strength it keeps pouring into me at 56 years old you'll never outgrow the need to hear the blessing spoken into your life we all need it you see here's what I want you to understand it's stronger than encouragement and it's different than a prayer encouragement is where I go Hercules Hercules just that that's that's not what this is encouragement is that the blessing is where I'm speaking beyond your emotions and I'm speaking into your spirit I'm speaking based on God's word. I'm repeating the principles of God's word into your life, which makes the authority of my words equal to his when I'm repeating his words. It's not Scott's opinion. It's his opinion. But I'm going to be the human, the voice that's going to put it inside your natural ears. It will go beyond your understanding sometimes and touch your heart. And you'll, even, you'll, you'll be brought to tears and not even know why. I'll tell you why. It was your heavenly father's words that touched your heart. See, some of you have never had someone speak life over you, speak blessing over you. That's what makes this different than prayer. Prayer is when I talk to him. Blessing is when I talk to you. We believe in prayer, absolutely. But some of you have never had a daddy look at you, and tell you he's proud of you, that you can do amazing things, that he's never bailing on you, that he's going to be with you and you're going to be all right. Never had that, that mother. They were there, they provided, but they never spoke that life. Some of you, you have, and you don't even understand how blessed you are, the fact that you had that. But it's the principle of God's word. There is the position of blessing where I bow before him under the open hand of God. There is the power of blessing where my words are making radical impact. I'm going to finish with this. Notice what God's word says about your words. Proverbs 16, 24, kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Proverbs 12, 25, anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up.
Ephesians 4, 29, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. There's a purpose of the blessing. So it reminds us how we're supposed to be living our life and our best days that are ahead. Would you stand to your feet all through this room? I'm not finished with my message, but I am right now. I want you to hear me today. You are who God says you are. You are not your family's reputation. You're different. You're marked. God's favor is leveraged towards your life. You're talented. You're strong. You're wise. You can handle so much more. People have overlooked you for a long time. They don't understand the value, the power, the quality inside of your heart, your mind, and your spirit. They just breeze right on by. God takes second and third looks at you. He's never overlooked you one day. And his word has always been the same, that I'm for you and not against you. I'm here to lift you and never put you down. All he asks is that you and I begin to align with him and pursue that that he has spoken over our future. And the moment I start running with his words instead of against his words is when the outpour of heaven hits my life and I begin to multiply and increase and dominate in life just as he said in Genesis 1:28. The blessing comes first. The successful life comes second. And the results of living that life in honor of God overtake your life. Your best days are ahead of you, free life. I'm never going to let you remind. You can throw every excuse you want to in the book. I'm here to cancel your American excuse card. It is gone. I've canceled it. I've voided it out. I'm chewing it up and you're cutting it up. It doesn't work here because if God be for you, I can't hear you. If God be for you, who can be against you? Father, I've spoken your word to your people today, and I pray that you haunt them with your promises. I pray you would irritate them, bring a righteous frustration in their spirit that there's more, there's better, there's another day, there's another step. I have no limits on my life because in you and with you all things are possible. They are the head and not the tail. They will lend and not borrow. They're blessed in the city. They're blessed in the field. You gave us the power to get wealth. Your hand is on our life. Your favor is flowing. Your peace is in full effect, filling in all the empty places of our life. We are not victims. We are victors. We are above and not beneath, and we will move forward in life. I will not live stuck. Jesus, you did too much on the cross for me to stay where I am. My best days are ahead of me, so it's with excitement. It's with anticipation. It's with a hope and a joy that I step into my future and I'm going to say that. I'm speaking life over my kids. I'm speaking life over my home. I'm speaking life over my spouse. I'm speaking life over my friends, over my co-workers. And Holy Spirit, if you stir me hard enough, I'll speak it over a stranger. But I will use my mouth to declare your glory and awaken the blessing that everything you have for us will come fully alive. We were made for a day like this so have your way in our lives holy spirit it's in the matchless wonderful name of jesus i pray and seal this message the lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Did I or did I not say you were going to be encouraged? Yeah. <laughs> Feel free to check out our website, freelifechapel.org, for more encouraging messages. Until then, I hope you have a great day.